Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Darren Newsom, Senior Market Analyst with Bar Chart. Uh, seeing a lot of green on the board on the grain side of things this morning. Hogs up, hitting more new contract highs. Crude oil is up. Cattle, really one of the only places where we're seeing some red. So let's start off over in the grain complex this morning. We had a huge amount of demand that came at the market this morning. Uh, Mexico buying almost 31 million bushels of corn this morning. We also had some soybean business. Are we seeing the market reflecting that, or is this maybe some positioning here with these uh, grains higher ahead of the election? I, I think I, I think it's it's a lot of different things, Michelle, and and you're right. I think some of it has to do with the uncertainty of the election. So we can take you know you know the global markets don't know what to make of the U.S. Uh, pol- of U.S. politics at this point. Uh, I get asked that all the time, you know, what's going on and, and does it understand what's at stake? And, you know, there's no good answer to that, but we can look at the way, you know, global players are approaching this thing. And, and you know, we are seeing Mexico load up on some corn. Why? Well, I mean, there's a threat of, what, 300 percent tariffs and, and possible trade wars across the board with Mexico and other trade partners. So, yeah, we are seeing some of the global players step in. And they're doing some buying because, and again, we have no idea when when this presidential election is going to finally be settled. It might not be till the end of December. It could be into January. Who knows? I mean, it, 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 that's the U.S. political system these days. So you know, there, there's a lot of uncertainty, and, and you know, traders, both commercial and non-commercial, just simply don't like uncertainty. But we also have low prices. Uh, you know, it's something that we can t- continue to watch and monitor at the end of of, of every day. Uh, but you know, I like to post a, an end of the month look at at uh, national cash indexes and available stocks to use. And the bottom line is the U.S. still has plenty of grain on hand across the board in relation to demand. So, you know, buyers are going to look at that. They can see that the prices are low. They can see that there's a lot of uncertainty and they're going to get some and they're going to get some coverage in place for Mexico. It's their primary uh, supplies for things like uh, for things like China with soybeans. It's their secondary supplies. So if this is front loading, Darren, do you expect after the election, maybe it halts? Maybe we don't see it. Well, yeah, particularly if, you know, if it goes one way, uh, if it goes a certain way, then, you know, and, and one of the first acts is to start new trade wars or worsen the ones that are in place and put more tariffs on. Then, yeah, I think this could come to an end. I think it could come to an end quickly because remember, I mean, these things all begin with executive orders. They don't have to go through any, you know, official, you know, congressional clearance or anything like this. It can all be, you know, can all be done previously. It was done on social media. It was announced on social media, and that's how that's how these things start. So, yeah, we've got to be. I mean, I think that you know, global buyers are certainly aware of that, and that it could happen immediately. And so, yes, I, I do think. Once the election, if and when it's ever decided, actually decided, I, I think if these, you know, if it turns a certain way, yes, I think these sales will just shut off. And we also should talk about, um, as the broader context of geopolitical discussion, you know, we're still kind of watching what's going on with Iran and Israel. Mm-hmm. The energy markets have kind of reflected that, haven't they? Yeah, it was a, it was interesting last weekend. You know, we saw the buying similar to today. We saw commercial buying going into the weekend due to the chance of or, or the uncertainty of what was going to happen. And then we had you know Israel uh, firing missiles at Iran, Iran getting upset and doing this sort of thing. But then when Monday came, Sunday night into Monday, we saw the crude oil market collapse. And, you know, again, just a sign of the times, the story that was attached to the sell off in crude oil it was that not enough people were killed. That and enough supplies weren't destroyed. And so the market came down. Okay, so fast forward to this Friday, and it's almost a carbon copy. We see crude oil up a couple dollars. We see commercial buying coming back in. Why? Because we don't know what's going to happen this weekend. Uh, A lot of the global players need to see political change in the United States. They want to see political change in the United States. And so that's why we see violence. We see chaos ramped up every weekend, you know, ahead of the election. And as you pointed out in, in the grains uh, discussion, yes, it could carry over into post-election as well. No doubt. So the other thing we I would like to get into, we talked about demand coming at the market. So mm-hmm. Mexico in buying corn, China was in buying um, soybeans, as well as unknown destinations this morning. Interesting that we saw India in buying, what, 30,000 metric yeah. tons of soybean oil. 
What's been going on with that veg oil market? Because palm oil has been hitting new highs. We've got bean oil hitting some new highs for the move above the 200 day moving average. Something's going on. Yeah, it's new demand. I mean, these are these. this is the sign of a demand driven market. And, you know, I've had this discussion with U.S. producers. Uh, you know, the evolution of the global market, the global diesel market is toward renewable diesel. And so vegetable oils across the scale, doesn't matter if it's canola, soybean oil, uh, Malaysian palm oil or palm oil from anywhere, these markets are seeing buying. And, you know, if there's chances, you know, for a world uh, for a world buyer to step in and get some locked in, they're going to do it. Because, again, we can see this is the road that that the market's on. This is the road that this particular aspect of the market is on. And so. Yeah, it, it, we saw some soybean oil sold to India. Was I expecting on my bingo card coming into today's session was an export sale of anything to India? No, I, I didn't have that anywhere. Uh, they're part of the BRICS alliance. Why would they be buying? Of course, you know, we've seen China in soybean oil we, or soybeans. We've talked about that. So now we expand that out to India buying some U.S. soybean oil. Yeah, things are just going to continue to get more interesting. Yeah, super interesting for sure. All right, weather, let's talk about that. Uh, we have some rains that are forecasted for the Southern Plains at the same time. You have the drought monitor, which mm -hmm. is now wow. expanded. And we have a bigger portion of winter wheat country that is seeing drought versus last year. Is the market concerned about it at all? Not yet, but I think it will be. As you pointed out, the latest U.S. drought monitor basically is colored in uh, from you know the east coast to the west coast, north to south, and as I pointed out yesterday, you know in our discussion in, in the discussion of it, you know it looks like a, a kid's placemat at uh, at one of the you know, one of the family restaurants where they provide crayons and coloring things. I mean, it is just completely covered in with a variety of colors. There really doesn't seem to be a lot of of consistency. I mean, it, it just here it's worse, there it's not. Uh, but the bottom line is almost from tip to you know from end to end. Uh, the country is showing some level, some reading of drought. And I, do, and I do think it's going to be an issue. I just, as we head into late fall, early winter, it's not first and foremost with so many other things going on, uh, you know, next week and this month, it's just not first and foremost on traders' minds. Now, that being said, I do think they're going to keep a closer eye on the developments in, in South America as, you know, in the Southern Hemisphere, this is the equivalent of May and things start to get more interesting. Uh, as we move into late spring, early summer. So uh, I think that's where the attention is going to go once we start getting towards the latter stages of winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. Then I think it starts to draw the attention back as we start talking about spring planning. Yeah, and I agree with you. Um, but South America, at least Brazil, has been getting some rain. It looks mm -hmm. like planting is picking up there. So that's going to be a little bit of a headwind for this market, at least the soybeans, don't you think? I do. And we can see that in the May, July spread, we've seen the carry, you know, it's not bearish, but we've seen some, we've seen a strengthening carry in the May, July future spread. And so this, this is a good read. This is one of our better reads on the South American situation and that, you know, the commercial side of the soybean market is getting a bit more comfortable. And again, we know China has been buying some secondary supplies. We know there's a lot of things that could change here over the next few months uh, with China's interest in U.S. soybeans. But number one, it still comes down to what type of production, how large production is Brazil going to going to have uh, in 2025. And again, looking at the May, July spread, there seems to be at least a growing comfort level. Uh, they're not completely comfortable with it yet, but a growing comfort level of what that production in Brazil might be. Cattle market, uh, lower again here today. This would be the third down day for contracts like the December live cattle. Are we topping? Is this topping action, you think? Certainly feels like it. Certainly looks like it on, on charts. And, you know, as we look at things like the cash markets and so on, cash market seems to be a bit stuck uh, as far as what's being reported both north and south. We look at the if we look at the box beef markets. They had a strong run here for most of October, then backed off uh, late in the month. And we continue to see some pressure coming into Friday. Uh, so it certainly looks like this market could be topping out. Uh, you know, and if we want, we can tie this to what we saw you know, in U.S. stock markets at the end of October, I mean, that was a that was a that was a serious sell off uh, the last day of the month. We saw it in stock markets. We saw it in gold. And it could certainly have a ripple effect over into live cattle, which could then also pull uh, pull the feeder cattle market down. Yeah, I thought you would probably try to tie those two together here. And let's talk about the bearish 
spike reversal on the mm -hmm. monthly charts that we had in the S&P? Does it mean anything? Is that market starting to roll over, do you think? Or again, was that just a play before the election? I, all of the above. And I know that doesn't help anybody. But if, if I'm just looking at this, if I eliminate all of the noise and all of the possibilities and all the potential chaos, and I just look at this from a technical point of view, uh, that is a bearish key, that is bearish spike reversal that indicates the previous long term uptrend has come to an end and we're ready to go down for a year, maybe two, maybe more. Uh, and that's what it looks like on, on the long term monthly chart. Now, as we progress through October, what is seasonally a bullish month for U.S. stock indexes, and we could go back and we could take out the previous high and eliminate uh, the, the technical pattern that we saw at the end of October. It closed lower for the month. It closed obviously lower for the day by 100 and some odd points, but it was still above the July settlement. And there is some research out there that says this is an indicator of how uh, the U.S. presidential election could come out, could, should come out in November. So again, there was so many things going on. And if we eliminate all but the technical pattern, it would tell us that this long-term trend is turned down. Can we believe it? I don't know. Again, with so much going on, it's hard to say absolutely that uh, there's nothing but down coming for a while. Well, and I pointed out because it could impact money flow in terms mm -hmm. of the ag sector for sure. But you could also just say, hey, it was end of the month. Maybe they mm -hmm. took some profits, right? They could. I mean, these markets have just skyrocketed and everything was overbought. All of the stock right. indexes were overbought. Gold was overbought, silver and so on. So, you know, the fact that they came under pressure isn't a huge shock if we just look at it instead of technically, if we just look at it from, OK, let, let's put some of this money in our pocket ahead of the uncertainty and then maybe get back in afterwards. OK, sounds good. Thanks so much, Darren Newsom, Senior Market Analyst with Bar Chart with Markets Now.